From athletes to authors, entertainers to innovators, we connect with those who help shape our culture. Join us in revealing stories of their lives and backgrounds, their triumphs and tragedies that molded them into who they are today. Authentically off script and personally illuminating, this is Audibles with Jason Scarborough. Coming up next on Audibles, Mike Leach. So Susanville, California is where it all started, but you grew up in Cody, Wyoming, or at least that's where, what you call your hometown. So what happened for you guys to move from California to Wyoming? Well, uh, yeah, I think everybody's from where they went to high school. You right. Know, people say, we'll live somewhere a month, and they'll say, I'm from such and such, mm -hmm. or somebody's uh, born somewhere, they'll say, I'm from such and such, or then uh, some people pick out whatever they think the coolest location they lived and uh, try to get status points. But um, <clears throat> no, I think everybody's from where the, the, where they went to high school. I mean, that's kind of uh, probably the biggest shaping period of your life. And then if you went to a bunch of high schools, I imagine uh, you're confused, but you have a lot to draw from to sort it all out. But um, uh, Susanville, California, my dad was a forester. And... Um, <clears throat> And uh, so we worked for the U.S. Forest Service, and as a result, you get transferred, moved around a lot. And and he was a, a very sharp guy, did well on the g government tests and things. And so we went from Susanville, California, to Fall River Mills, California. Now these are up there, just kind of mountain forestry lumber towns, and then um, <clears throat> uh, real pretty, you know, just uh, great big pine trees and all that. And then. Uh, then he went to Alexandria, Virginia. We went to Alexandria, Virginia, uh, where um, I guess he was being shaped to be a bureaucrat, which didn't appeal to him at all, because you know you go into forestry because it's about mountains and trees. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> then this is going to be a long list. And then we went to uh, Saratoga, Wyoming, and then we went to uh, Fort Collins, Colorado then Golden, Colorado, and then uh, uh, Sheridan, Wyoming, and then Cody, Wyoming, where I eventually graduated from uh, high school. How would you describe Cody, Wyoming, growing up there? What, what was that like for you growing up there? You know, it's, uh, it's pretty much what people would envision the Wild West, mm -hmm. and it looks like the Wild West, really? and it is. Uh, <clears throat> the town was uh, founded by Buffalo Bill Cody, uh, it's one of the most scenic parts of Wyoming. That's one good thing about uh, if your dad's a forester, everywhere you live is a is a, a, a really pretty place. Mm -hmm. Cold though, you know, mountains are cold. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and we're the east entrance of Yellowstone, um, and uh, so a lot of tourists coming through to check out Yellowstone and check out. Uh, oh, even now, um, if you watch. Uh, things on the Old West or documentaries, Discovery Channel, it'll often cite the Buffalo Bill Historical Center in Cody, Wyoming, where a lot of those famous uh, paintings are, you know, uh, uh, all the, you know, the Remingtons and the, uh, they even have beer stots, uh, uh, Catlins, uh, you know, all famous uh, you know, Western artists from that period, uh, C.M. Russell, and, um, uh, you know, you go in there and, you know, here's uh, Sitting Bull's Tomahawk, that type of thing. I mean, they, they, it's, and this thing takes you about five hours to go through it. I oh, mean, wow. It's really thorough. And um, <clears throat> down on the edge of town, there's a place, this is maybe my favorite. It's called Trail Town. And what a guy named Bob Edgar did, um, <clears throat> he went uh, around the West and, and uh, got these various cabins and, you know, buildings from the Old West, and then uh, took them and reassembled them. <laughs> and Cody made kind of a a street, you know, like a ghost town looking street. And there's a bar that uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid uh, drank at in that, and uh, Jeremiah Johnson's uh, winter cabin, uh, or as uh, the Western guys like to call him, Liver Eating Johnson, <laughs> and. Uh, I, I mean, it was it was a great place as far as uh, uh, mountains and rivers and you know just uh, uh, 
and the, you know, they uh, uh, <coughs> downtown looks uh, very western. Downtown Cody, and um, uh, and a lot of that celebrated part of it because tourists would come to see it, and part of it just because uh, they embraced it in Cody. A lot of ranches. Um, they actually had oil too. Husky oil was hmm. based there at one time. And then they sold it to Marathon Oil, so it was a good play. Now you're the oldest of, of six. That, that's a big family. So what was your relationship like <coughs> with, with your siblings growing up? Well, I was the oldest, so it, it was a great relationship. Big brother, because I was in charge. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was the oldest of six. Uh, um, uh, yeah, well, one brother and four sisters. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and they're scattered all over nowadays. What were your interests as a child when you were growing up? I had a lot of interests. Uh, I always read quite a bit. I had a lot of interests. Uh, uh, well, I read everything I could get my hands on on Geronimo, and so I really enjoyed that, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I read everything I, I could find on Geronimo, and, um, and eventually I uh, had the privilege of writing a book about Geronimo, uh, uh, which is still on Amazon, still selling leadership strategies of an American warrior. Um, and uh, uh, it's a lot of history. Uh, <coughs> you know, when I was a little kid running around the neighborhood, we'd play everything from uh, Batman to cowboys and Indians to, <laughs> you know, cops and robbers to, you know, I, I mean, it was, you know, because that's back when. Uh, you know, kids and dogs ran all all over the neighborhood. You didn't just have your backyard. You kind of had everybody's unless they kicked you out, you know. <laughs> now, I'm always curious because you've turned into this incredible coach. Was there something that you wanted to be growing up that maybe had nothing to do with sports, nothing to do with coaching? Maybe that was surprises? Uh, no, I mean, as a little kid, um, first grade or so, draw a picture of what you want to be when you grow up. I drew a forester fighting a forest fire because that's what dad was. Um, <coughs> then I decided I was going to be an NFL quarterback because I was a big fan of uh, Bart Starr um, in the Green Bay Packers. I had his picture above my bed. Um, let's see. Uh, other stuff. I mean, I wanted to be everything. I wanted to be, <laughs> I wanted to be a cowboy. I wanted to go <clears throat> uh, live in Africa, build a really cool tree house and, and just drop off the grid. I wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to, uh, well, then when, when I hit 15, um, I started coaching and, and coaching uh, in, uh, <clears throat> see, in, in high school I was playing football so I couldn't coach football, but um, you know, they're uh, starting 15 through my sophomore year in college. I always had uh, a baseball team, and uh, and I was the head coach, and it was unusual. But seeing you could drive when you were 15 in Wyoming, and so um, and so, uh, yeah, I always had a team, and I was the, the kind of the only kid that was doing it, you know. And but I was just into it, and um, and you know, I have a job and on my job I'd think about who'd be better to put at first base and you know how do we get this guy to throw strikes and you know just run it all through my mind and um, <coughs> was uh, uh, when I was a freshman in college I read Coach Polk's book because I had a baseball coaching class in college and his book was the textbook and um, so um, yeah, I kind of got the coaching bug there. I was always more of a football guy, and then, um, you know, and thought if I ever had the chance, I'd like to coach football. So, Do you still have that original <coughs> copy of the, the baseball playbook? Do you still have yes, it? Yes, I do. It's it's fastened with, uh, <laughs> it's fastened with, uh, I don't know what you'd call them. They're kind of like uh, brads that go through the paper mm -hmm. and fold this way. and The little brass. And there's a thing to hold them down. Yeah. 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 But no, it's, uh, I, do, I do still have it. Don't go anywhere. Audible returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. During times of uncertainty, 
It's comforting to know we have a healthcare system in our community that's been committed to supporting us for well over a century. In this current time, we are standing together and our bond is stronger than ever. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Before traveling to your game day destination this football season, be sure to download the MDOT Traffic app to help you reach the game safely by checking ahead for crashes, closures, and construction with MDOT Traffic app. Available free for both Apple and Android devices. Where is your nearest Bank Plus? We're here. Here. And here. We're with you wherever. Whenever you need us. Your Bank. Your Plus. Bank Plus. At Forest General Hospital, we have the playbook for helping patients every day, every season. Our team is here to ensure patients receive safe and reliable medical care. Our mission and game plan is to do what is best for our patients. Our lineup of skilled healthcare professionals, together with advanced technology and treatment options, set Forest General apart. We are here to help you make winning decisions when it comes to your health. For more information about our services, visit ForestGeneral.com. Serving clients in Mississippi and the Deep South, Warren Brothers Media provides endless solutions for you. From wedding videography, social media advertising and promotion, photography, video production, and much more, Zach and Zane Warren walk with you every step of the way to meet your individual need. Contact Warren Brothers Media to get started on your project today by logging on to warrenbrothersmedia.com. Warren Brothers Media, brothers serving others. Family owned and operated since 1986, Lakeside Molding has become the trusted source of architectural products throughout the South. They offer fine interior architectural moldings, custom millwork, and cabinet doors designed and handcrafted in Flowood. Their showroom on Lakeland Drive is stocked with today's most sought-after interior details, including corbels, posts, fireplace mantles, bath vanities, mirrors, and much more. Tim Shoemaker and his staff work closely to meet client needs for new construction, restoration, and remodeling projects. Lakeside Molding, where details make the difference. What was Mike Leach like in high school in Cody, Wyoming, home of the Bronx, right? Was that, was that the home of the Bronx in Cody, Wyoming? Back yeah, in, back we were the day? Cody Bronx. Um, uh, I was like, you know, I guess like everybody back then, you know, you just try to find your niche and mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, uh, try to be one of the cool kids. and. Um, uh, you know, which of course that's always a battle, and then um, and then uh, you know, hang out with your friends and do the high school thing. One thing in Cody, since it's isolated, you know, you'd read and you'd hear about other places as much as you could, and so I think your imagination kind of uh, you know is a is a pretty good fueling ground for uh, you know wanting to see other places and curiosity and things like that, and and it certainly was for me. And, um, uh, you know, I got good grades. I did always get good grades. Athletically, I worked very hard and was on uh, a lot of teams and uh, worked hard at it. Uh, uh, was, I was never a great athlete. Uh, part of it, in, in, in high school, I was small. In high school, I uh, was about 5'10 and 155 pounds when I graduated. And then I grew once I was in college, which all that would have come in very handy in, <laughs> in uh, high school. You know, I left college approximately six feet, probably 185 pounds, which that would have been a lot better, but uh, and faster too. Mm -hmm. So, um, but no, no, I always worked hard at it, and I think focusing on things and trying to improve it. I think uh, some of those things you know I, you, you use every day in coaching either consciously or unconsciously. So you attend BYU, it's 1979, Lavelle Edwards is the head coach of BYU, Norm Chow, everyone if you follow college football you should know who Norm Chow is, uh, he's the offensive coordinator. They're running this high octane, wide open offensive attack. What was it about that that intrigued you so much, that, that drew you to it? Well, and then Roger French was the, the offensive line coach. He was offensive coordinator as well. They split that up. But the, um, um, 
you know, it was kind of state-of-the-art football. I mean, they, they were doing things before anybody else was, and uh, <clears throat> it kind of fueled, uh, you know, other teams started throwing it more as a result of what BYU was doing. And, uh, and it was a great time to uh, be at BYU and witness what they were doing because, um, you know, um, when, when I first got there, uh, uh, Gifford Nielsen had just left. And then it was Mark Wilson, and then Jim McMahon for two years, then Steve Young, and then Ty Detmer, uh, or no, it wasn't Ty Detmer, it was um, Robbie Bosco followed. But anyway, so I was there during uh, McMahon's two years and Young's first year and, uh, and Wilson's last year. But, um, you know, they're just doing a lot of things as far as attacking the whole field and getting it in a lot of people's hands. and. Um, um, you know, achieving at a really high level, uh, part of it because they utilize space and personnel well, I thought. And uh, so it was a pretty good place to kind of um, think about football and, um, you know, whether you copy something directly and get you thinking about something along those lines that maybe you or others think of, you know. I'm always curious when I go back and I look at some of your, your bio, you get a Juris Doctor from Pepperdine Law School, then you go down to the Sports Academy School in, in Alabama, get a degree there. That, that's a lot of education in a compacted amount of time. What, what was it about trying to get that? Did you foresee a future in coaching, possibly being in the uh, legal profession that you just wanted to, what, knock out two birds with one stone maybe? Well, it was kind of a series of... Uh you know, once you get down the, I didn't want to not finish anything, and then you, once you get down that tunnel, you kind of claw your way along. But uh, <laughs> um, no, I always knew I was going to go to college. Even when I was a kid, I planned to go to college. I just thought that was part of the deal. I'm going to college, and um, <clears throat> um, and then you know I had to pay my own way to college. Um, so. You know, but you know, in Wyoming over the summer, you could get a job, mm -hmm. and I couldn't pay the whole thing, but I had a local academic scholarship that helped with some, and then I'd have to uh, work during the year, and I, not full time or anything, but you know, to uh, fill in, uh, you know, the, the, the slack there. Mm -hmm. And um, and when I got out of BYU, I graduated in eight semesters, and part of it is is you kind of expedite that if you're paying for it yourself, you know. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, I'd, I'd make sure I passed a class because I was paying for the class, mm -hmm. you know. And then, um, you know, when can I get out of here? Because, I mean, <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting there with my little checkbook, which didn't have anything in the account, and, you know, adding it up. And, okay, this is going to cost me this much if I stretch <laughs> it out another semester here. And <clears throat> so... Um, uh, I got through in eight semesters, which I don't 100 percent recommend. I mean, if you can, <laughs> if you can go five years, I mean, well, because college is one of the funnest times of your life, mm -hmm. and to spread it out over five years where you're not just, uh, you know, cranking away. I mean, because um, you know, obviously, I was taking quite a few credit hours in order to do that, and then um, did so, and uh, you know, never did get to go to summer school because I had to go home and work, you know, mm -hmm. and so then. Um, well, then I went to law school, and um, and I thought that that's just how people did it. You know, I thought, well, you know, you graduate from college, you go straight away to law school. And I, we didn't really have any lawyers in my family. I had a cousin who was older than me, um, <clears throat> and um, you know, and she was already a lawyer and everything, but not really anybody to talk to or draw from with regard to. A law. My dad hated attorneys, and so, you know, this wasn't a deal where, you know, some uncle was an attorney or something, you know. And then, um, so, um, well, and so I, and then somewhere about midway through high school, I just assumed I was going to be an attorney, and uh, you know, wanted to, you know, protect, uh, protect the little guy, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know. Uh, keep uh, corporations in line for uh, and insurance companies, you know, if they uh, screw somebody that's uh, somewhat defenseless or, you know, that type of thing, you know, kind of 
have a hand in helping make uh, the world right, so to speak. And so then, um, uh, well, so I went to law school. When I got to law school, uh, I'm 22 years old, and I discovered that everybody's older than 22 <laughs> years old except me and a guy named Kurt. And, 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 and Kurt was the same age as me. And um, <clears throat> and we were the youngest guys in the school. Once in a while, would ask other people how old they were. <laughs> they were young, looking to jealously guard our position as the youngest, and we were the youngest. And you know, you have all this law stuff. And closest thing we'd ever come to a contract was like our phone, uh, our phone contract or whatever, or our, or our, our rental agreement for our apartment or something. And um, and we both, I think, actually. We both did pretty well, but I think part of it had to do with the clarity. You know, we didn't have two cluttered up minds. If they said, you know, you know, this tort or this contract or you know, this uh, property laws like this, you know, we didn't have anything, to, uh, you know, that was cluttering it up. Yep, that's yep, it sure is. It's just <laughs> like that, you know. And then um, <clears throat> we, uh, and then, uh, but I, I, you know, in. in so this whole education and, and uh, career stuff's, uh, uh, you know, uh, blazing down the rails at a pretty high rate. And, uh, and you know, and I was married at that point, married and had uh, my first daughter. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, and I, uh, so I didn't have time to, uh, you know, go to Europe and find myself or any of that <laughs> stuff. And to be honest, I had a little bit of trouble reconciling uh, wearing a suit as often as would be required. Really? Yeah, that was troubling to me. I mean, I, I don't know how to really describe it. Um, <clears throat> you know, just do it or just wear it. Everybody else has one. Um, <clears throat> it it, it uh, Just in the back of my mind, it was a little distasteful. <laughs> and then, um, um, and then, um, and then, you know, I'm thinking, this was probably around second year of law school, I'm thinking, well, do I wanna, um, do I wanna uh, uh, just, you know, go be a, uh, an attorney? And, and, and I, I read, uh, uh, well, I liked uh, books, uh, uh, Melvin Belli books, and I liked Jerry Spence books, two great trial attorneys. And, of course, Jerry's from Wyoming, and I'd actually lived in some of the towns that he was from, but he's quite a bit older than me. And then, um, uh, you know, so as he would describe stuff, I'd know the town, like inside and out, and, you know, and the, kind of the whole setting, everything. And then, um, um, <clears throat> of course, then he did a lot of national cases, like Silkwood, sued uh, Penthouse Magazine, uh, uh, defended Imelda Marco, stuff like that. Can you imagine being Bob Guccione coming into Laramie, Wyoming? <laughs> uh, Culture while, shock, While, while you're being sued, and here's pickups <laughs> with... Uh, with uh, with deer tied to the front, if it was a big deer, and in comes this guy with a hat and a fringe jacket, <laughs> and uh, uh, well, anyways, twenty two million dollars later, uh, right. Miss Wyoming was made whole. You know, don't go anywhere. Audible returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. Hello, I'm Gary Jolly from the Tractor Store in Richland. Now's the best time of the year to save more with Mahindra. And it all starts with zero. Pay zero down and zero percent interest up to 60 months. That's more for less on many of Mahindra's best-selling models with tractors that deliver more lift, capacity, fuel efficiency, and built-in weight. So get zero down, zero percent interest for up to 60 months on Mahindra, the world's number one selling tractor, Mahindra, available at the Tractor Store in Richland. The best sweet potatoes in the world are growing right here in Mississippi. Full of vitamin C, dietary fiber, and potassium, the sweet potato is a nutritional powerhouse. You can eat them as a side to a juicy steak, cut up and fried, or as a dessert with your favorite meal. But really, there are hundreds of ways to prepare and eat Mississippi sweet potatoes. If it comes from this soil, it comes from a farm family of Mississippi, providing for our family and yours. I can totally see us cooking in this kitchen. I can totally see us cooking like pros with natural gas. Oh, I would love to soak in that tub. I'd love to save energy and money with a natural gas water heater. 
I can imagine cuddling up in here. Because natural gas heating keeps the house comfortable when we need it. We have to get this house. We have to get natural gas. We're investing in infrastructure to help bring comfort and savings to you. Visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. We hope you're enjoying Audibles with Jason Scarborough. Watch every full, unedited episode via our digital platforms. Download our free Roku TV channel simply by searching for Audibles on your Roku device. Look us up on our YouTube channel, too, under Spirit Media Network and hit subscribe and enjoy episodes of Audibles along with our other original content. Bookmark our website at spiritmedianet.com and stay up to date on what's happening on the Spirit Media Network where we're changing the game. The COVID vaccines are here. Know the facts. Get the shot in the pandemic. The vaccines are proven safe and effective. The vaccine does not contain COVID. Nor will it give you COVID. Side effects are relatively minor. Arm pain, fatigue, and low-grade fever. COVID-19 vaccine protects you and those you love. As healthcare workers, we're setting the example for our patients and our community. This is your shot. Schedule your COVID-19 vaccine today. I thought, well, you know, go be an attorney and then, you know, you can coach in your spare time. And I knew that that wasn't going to quite cut it because, you know, spare time, I knew that there at times there wouldn't be spare time. Mm -hmm. And then, um, or, uh, you know, retire early and then coach then. And I, then I'm thinking, yeah, but what if I coached then and wished I'd coached the whole time, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so <clears throat> I'm thinking, you know, this isn't uh, maybe the best approach. So I'm thinking, well, how about if I, um, <clears throat> yeah, how about if I uh, start coaching now, do it for two or three years, get it out of my system, then go practice law. Mm -hmm. And so that was more appealing, except for when I graduated from uh, law school and we informed uh, uh, my parents and um, my wife's parents that, uh, um, <clears throat> um, I was going to go pursue coaching for a while. How'd that go after over? After they decided, realized that was, I wasn't joking. <laughs> oh, no, they were pissed. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, three of them were pissed except my dad. He just walked off laughing, shaking his head. <laughs> and he says, he says, well, I hate those guys anyway. <laughs> and, and, then, and then, so then, then he, um, um, well, and I owed the federal government, um, tried to figure out a way to finance this uh, <coughs> this coaching scheme and because um, I was you know I, was, I owed the federal government forty five thousand dollars in student loans and it may as well have been forty five million because they had as good a chance of getting forty five thousand as they did forty five million because I was broke I didn't have anything and and, uh, and uh, because uh, even though we lived in the barrio there in LA, it still was more than we had, you know. And then, and then my wife worked all the time. I, I wouldn't be coaching without my wife because, you know, she worked uh, that whole uh, time to keep uh, part of this thing afloat, you know. And um, well, so I did the logical thing. Uh, I took out a bunch more student loans and uh, <laughs> got another degree and um, got a master's and by then I went to the United States Sports Academy, great place, um, and um, uh, <clears throat> well, and at that point, you know, I mean, for a master's you write a lot of papers and law school to some extent is a degree in paper writing mm -hmm. and so I was good at writing papers by then and I mean, um, and, um, you know, I mean, uh, law school was quite a bit tougher than, than it was going to be to get a master's in sports science. And so um, the other thing, and part of the reason I selected the U.S. Sports Academy, because uh, this was the very year that you could only have two GAs. Prior to that, you could have as many as you wanted, and all mm -hmm. these teams would take free help. But, you know, this was the, the exact year went to two. So they are they were firing guys they already had, so mm -hmm. everybody was looking for a job. And so then, um, I, uh, um, well, the, the sports academy, though, 
you could do a deal called a mentorship, which meant you went and worked with somebody and they oversaw you, mm -hmm. and you took a couple correspondence classes, and then, um, uh, and then, but you had to spend a month and a half in Alabama each summer, you know, the summer, the first summer, and the last summer, and which was, I mean, that was a blast anyway. I mean, you know, Florabama's right down the road. And then, um, and then, you know, met people from all over the country, so it really was pretty fun. And then, um, uh, the, uh, well, and so, so they, um, uh, and then, you know, the guy, the, the head coach or whoever you're working for overseas, uh, what you're doing, you keep a journal and, uh, and do a bunch of academic stuff in the process. And, but you get hands-on experience, you get work experience, you make a few contacts, and, uh, <clears throat> and it worked out really well. So I, uh, you know, couldn't go to a Division One program very easily, maybe if I got tremendously lucky, but they're getting rid of their GAs, not hiring mm -hmm. them. And then uh, I, uh, 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 well, so then I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, called all over the country, and, check stuff out. There's a new staff there, and so I was excited about that. And San Luis Obispo is one of the most beautiful places in the country, so that's another bonus. Uh, if, you have, if you've never been there, you need to go there. It's okay. really gorgeous. It's, you know, 200 miles north of L.A., 200 miles south of San Francisco. That sweet spot that's right on the beach is in scenic and yet small town, you know. And, um, um, but, you know, the biggest reason was, you know, obviously go there, learn to coach, earn your stripes, and see if you can move in the profession. And so I was there a year and a half, and I would substitute teach in the off season. And then uh, I went and coached at uh, College of the Desert in Palm Desert, California, a junior college. And then, um, <clears throat> and uh, again, my wife working every step of the way, and me substitute teaching. Uh, and the off season and in California that means now sub substitute teaching is combat pay uh, in California but California pays you quite a lot too I mean even back then you know they pay you a hundred bucks a day or so Wow well, yeah exactly and so then um, and um, <clears throat> I think the lowest was 70 and then if you got on uh, full-time temporary is 120 so um, but um, uh, anyway, so, uh, and I learned a lot about people there and stuff, and I, I, I didn't dislike substitute teaching, maybe a class here or there, or just a bad group, I mean, I, uh, but, uh, yeah, we weren't too bad, and then, because um, uh, I did kind of enjoy it along the way, and we were in little apartments and stuff like that. And then, uh, and I'd always wanted to travel, but couldn't afford it. And then in the U, uh, in the NCAA news, um, you know, uh, there's an ad. They're looking for a coach to go to Finland. Well, and, that, and it, they call it semi-pro football, but it's basically men's league football. And you know, the players pay dues, and the ages are something like 15 to 45. And then, yeah, and you know, they're everything from students to factory workers to, uh, you know, kind of wealthy guys, and then <clears throat> and you go all over the country, and Finland's a bigger country than you'd think uh, if you're sitting on a bus driving from one spot to the next, <laughs> uh, which was, and it was awesome, and I got to go to Finland, and then we checked out Italy during the break, and then, uh, you know, I had relatives in Norway, and so we hit Norway and Sweden and, and was already in Finland. I actually had relatives in Finland, but they didn't speak English. And so they sent a letter that uh, one of my players read to me that said, uh, and they're further up north, you know, it would be great to see you. If you get up here, let us know. <laughs> you know, I figured, well, I've traveled the first 7,000 miles or so. So, um, so I didn't see them, but we did see the Norwegians. And then... And then, um, so that was pretty cool. And then in this, that, this particular year, I coached the entire year. Uh, coached the, the season at uh, College of the Desert. And then um, uh, the, the uh, fin finished season 
you know, was in the spring. And coached there up to uh, August, the first part of August, and then I had a job set up at Iowa Wesleyan College, and then coached at Iowa Wesleyan College um, for three years. Where you know, and there they they were an NAIA school because uh, I'd met uh, uh, Hal Mummy at uh, BYU uh, spring football. And so we were both at BYU Spring Football trying to see what we could learn from them. And so then I ended up, uh, oh man, I was, uh, uh, anybody that wants the detailed version of all this can get my book, Swing Your Sword, which is my, uh, basically my path into coaching. And, uh, and that's on Amazon too. Yeah, so <laughs> hey, I mean, buy both books. Maybe Amazon will give you a deal, I don't know. And, and then, um, <coughs> Um, so then they, um, uh, well, and, and you know, and he wanted to throw the ball, and you know, together we were together for um, uh, for ten years, and um, and you know, and, and together we'd constantly devise, think about, tinker, copy, uh, go check out other places, see what we could learn uh, football-wise, because this was before everything was on the computer, before mm -hmm. it was digital. I mean. You know, because when, when I first got in, it was still projector, 16 millimeter projector, for like uh, about two years, and then it was the, the, the old overhead projectors. Uh, yeah, yeah, where you'd set it on the floor and <laughs> shine it on anything you know that was white, and <laughs> and um, there's your, and you know if you think about it, um, you know there weren't too many films. I mean, all total, a school would probably only have you know, eight copies of, say, a game, mm -hmm. you know, and that was it, you know, so, um, <clears throat> you know, the public didn't know nearly as much about football then because, well, it just wasn't possible to get the films, you mm -hmm. know. Well, then next came the videos <clears throat> so you could mass produce the films, which that was helpful, but still it was hard to get the video. Now it's on digital, it's on the computer, mm -hmm. and, you know, Heck, you get fourth graders asking you about some play and what's the quarterback's read on something <laughs> or other, you know? And then, um, so then there's, uh, uh, and so all that uh, kind of progressed as we went. But the bit, at Iowa Wesleyan, you know, you go to somebody's place, you check it out, you do the thing, and you, um, <clears throat> you know, you see, uh, what they're up to, and so we we evolved a lot of plays from that, and, and packaged up some good ones. And we were at Iowa Wesleyan for three years, won a bunch of games. Went to Valdosta State for five years, won a bunch of games, and then <clears throat> from there is one of the biggest leaps in the history of college football. Uh, Hal got hired to be the head coach at uh, University of Kentucky. You know, went from uh, went from. Uh, Valdosta State to the University of Kentucky. How about that? It's a big jump. Yeah, Division II to uh, an SEC school. Mm -hmm. And then, and it was funny because uh, C.M. Newton, who's one of the greatest ADs in the history of sports, mm -hmm. um, uh, he had a unique path like that. C.M. played basketball at Kentucky, but uh, when he got out and he started coaching, I think he either went to, it was either Georgetown or Transylvania, but it was a small school. Mm -hmm. it, it was a little school, um, just like Valdosta, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even a little bit uh, smaller. Well, anyway, um, Bear Bryant, when he was AD at uh, uh, Alabama, because he was AD and head football coach, hired CM to be basketball coach at Alabama. So CM's own path, had, you know, he knew that, you know, if you can coach at one level, you can coach uh, at the next, which mm -hmm. I believe that, um, because, you know, it, it all mitigates, you know. I mean, everybody says, well, you can't do that in this league because our corners are all like Deion Sanders. Well, no, they're not. <laughs> but but let's say they are. Then that means all my receivers are like Jerry Rice, right? Right. You know, and <laughs> and um, so uh, I mean, it, there's a point to where it, where it all becomes kind of relative. And so CM it it it, it, it uh, jumped way up and successfully coached basketball. And then of course, when he became an AD, he could at least you know he could see it. He could see it happening. And then 
and then he liked, uh, you know, the ball being thrown all over. So Don't go anywhere. Audible returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. Before traveling to your game day destination this football season, be sure to download the MDOT Traffic app to help you reach the game safely by checking ahead for crashes, closures, and construction with MDOT Traffic app. Available free for both Apple and Android devices. At Forest General Hospital, we have the playbook for helping patients every day, every season. Our team is here to ensure patients receive safe and reliable medical care. Our mission and game plan is to do what is best for our patients. Our lineup of skilled healthcare professionals, together with advanced technology and treatment options, set Forest General apart. We are here to help you make winning decisions when it comes to your health. For more information about our services, visit ForestGeneral.com. Where is your nearest Bank Plus? We're here, here, and here. We're with you wherever, whenever you need us. Your Bank, your Plus, Bank Plus. Serving clients in Mississippi and the Deep South, Warren Brothers Media provides endless solutions for you. From wedding videography, social media advertising and promotion, photography, video production, and much more, Zach and Zane Warren walk with you every step of the way to meet your individual need. Contact Warren Brothers Media to get started on your project today by logging on to warrenbrothersmedia.com. Warren Brothers Media, brothers serving others. Family owned and operated since 1986, Lakeside Molding has become the trusted source of architectural products throughout the South. They offer fine interior architectural moldings, custom millwork, and cabinet doors designed and handcrafted in Flowood. Their showroom on Lakeland Drive is stocked with today's most sought after interior details, including corbels, post, fireplace mantles, bath vanities, mirrors, and much more. Tim Shoemaker and his staff work closely to meet client needs for new construction, restoration, and remodeling projects. Lakeside Molding, where details make the difference. The COVID vaccines are here. Know the facts. Get the shot. End the pandemic. The vaccines are proven safe and effective. Vaccine does not contain COVID. Nor will it give you COVID. Side effects are relatively minor and include arm pain, fatigue, and low-grade fever. The COVID-19 vaccine protects you and the ones you love. As healthcare workers, we're setting the example for our patients and community. This is your shot. Schedule your COVID-19 vaccine today. So your star is rising in coaching, and you, you get the call from Bob Stoops to come to Oklahoma yeah. as the offensive coordinator. What, what was that phone call like? Well, it was, it was pretty exciting. Bob and I had gotten to know each other uh, on the clinic circuit, you know, the, the football clinics and um, where you'd go all over the place every weekend. And, um, and you know, we'd see each other uh, mm -hmm. at, at the clinics and got to know each other. And... <coughs> and um, and in the SEC uh, those years, um, uh, uh, Kentucky led the SEC in offense. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Florida, Bob Stoops was a DC at Florida, um, uh, led the SEC in defense. Now, but Florida was overpowering on offense too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Florida was you know top defense, top offense, but. Well, so then the thought when and our teams gave uh, Bob problems schematically and things, and and so uh, and we'd act, you know, we talked a little bit about combining the thing, uh, which we did. Had the chance to do it Oklahoma. Yeah, and then Oklahoma, if I remember right, they were next to last offensively, and you know the Big Twelve at the time they were just a three yards in a cloud of dust kind of kind of offense league. But then you come in your first year as OC, and they go from next to last to first in just about every offensive category. And you're at Oklahoma for one year. Then the call comes from inside the conference for you to go to Texas Tech. So. How easy or hard was that decision to go to Texas Tech? Well, it was real hard um, because, well, first of all, I always wanted to be a head coach, no question about that, mm -hmm. and that was kind of my goal. Uh, when I took the job at Oklahoma, I actually thought I'd be at Oklahoma like, I don't know, maybe as long as 10 years, hmm. you know? I mean, well, because, you know, stuff doesn't just turn over in a year, you know? I mean, and Bob had just got there, and it was a great staff to be a part because, 
uh, a part of because <coughs> we're all about the same age, and uh, and you know it's kind of a first chance for a lot of us on a lot of things, and then uh, you know to uh, have the chance uh, to do it there at Oklahoma was a pretty exciting time, and um, so um, well I was there that. Uh, that first year, and uh, 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 and then I got the call, which I didn't think that, you know, I thought, no, you got to, you, you know, stay there, and it'd be, be six years, and before you get on the radar or whatever, you know, and um, <clears throat> so at any rate, um, Texas Tech calls, and uh, you know, the chance to be a head coach was exciting. It was extremely hard for me. Uh, to leave uh, Bob Stoops and all the, uh, you know, uh, friends there at Oklahoma, and I knew we were going to be good. And uh, then Josh Heupel, who I'd recruited, which uh, <clears throat> not a lot of people recruited Josh, but uh, recruited Josh Heupel, and, and, uh, who was our quarterback. And, uh, you know, and that was exciting because when we first got there, the two most wanted men in the state of Oklahoma were uh, me and Josh Heupel, me for suggesting that we throw the ball, Josh for throwing it without any ability to run. <laughs> jo you know, Josh can't run as fast as I can. And so then, and so then, um, uh, and then of course, uh, as we had success, uh, um, you know, uh, everybody got really excited about it. And, um, and of course, Josh uh, shattered every record in Oklahoma for passing for a season, you know, because they hadn't exactly thrown it a lot. And, <clears throat> um, but he, uh, uh, but yeah, to, to, to leave him there at, at that time, that was hard because, you know, we'd done quite a lot together in a short period of time. We felt like the future was going to be even better. Well, your Texas Tech career, you had a lot of milestones. First postseason win for Texas Tech at the time since 95. You guys crushed Clemson 55-15. Your first sweep of the in-state rivals, Baylor, Texas A&M, Texas since 1997. <coughs> Texas was ranked number one. Of course, we all remember how exciting that game was. You guys set all sorts of offensive records, Crabtree, all the quarterbacks you had there. I mean, you had such an impact on Texas Tech football. Is there an accomplishment that you're most proud of that maybe the, the public doesn't know about? Yeah, it's always, in, you know, you're always most excited about the next year, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it turns over every year. So, um, <clears throat> and it moves along fast enough. You don't have a lot of time to go down uh, memory lane other than when you retire, I suppose. And then, um, but the biggest thing was all the great people I got to, mm -hmm. I got to meet, got to know, and, uh, uh, you know, and how it unfolds uh, where they end up uh, later on in their life. Because, you know, <clears throat> there's a bunch of surprises there. I mean, um, I don't know. The, that guy had two guys that played for me. They sold their company for nearly a billion dollars. You know? Oh, wow. Um, then I had uh, uh, another fella, uh, JC, uh, uh, JC player who we played some uh, special teams, but you know, not a great player. Uh, he's just named the head VP for the uh, Seattle Mariners, and um, you know, so where these people end up and what they, uh, how thing evol things evolve is always exciting. Uh, really, the people and just uh, <clears throat> you know, striving, doing everything together. I think that's the most fulfilling part. You know. Um, because there's no, I've never seen it as a, a thing um, where there's any big destinations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always uh, the whole process, and you get to the end of the season, the process continues, and you're constantly trying to improve, upgrade, and adjust, and uh, everybody doing that together, I think, is a pretty thrilling part of it. Which was cooler? <coughs> because while you were at Texas Tech, you got to be in Friday Night Lights, the popular TV show. I love the role, by the way, how IMDB describes you. A random loon is how they described you. It says, find your inner pirate and swing your sword to the destitute coach. But you also were featured on 60 Minutes. So which one was more fun? Which one was the coolest experience? Well, uh, Friday Night Lights was all very quick. Um, we were actually in town to play Texas and should have beat them. 
and then we um, uh, so yeah, and, you know while the team was at the movie I quickly went and shot that scene oh cool yeah and at the gas station there in Austin and then uh, and then uh, heck I had a I had a call to uh, Kyle Chandler sometime uh, I don't know him well. The, the the guy gave me his number, so I ought to check in with him, see how he's doing, <laughs> see if he's still swinging his sword. You know. uh, but uh, no, I, I I keep up with a number of people uh, from there. Got to know Peter Berg uh, and other opportunities to go check out, watch him work uh, as he directs stuff. So that's pretty thrilling. And then um, uh, and then sixty minutes. Uh, uh, 60 minutes is uh, two things. One, it's really thrilling, um, but the other thing, you know, it's kind of like an audit. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, they come in there and they stay for a week. You know, and a then, week, and then um, they stay for a week and uh, bounce around the country. <clears throat> and then there's a point to where you go have the big interview, and. Uh, uh, with, and, and I did it with uh, Pelly, and then mm-hmm. um, you have the big interview, and uh, and they'll bring stuff like uh, you know, like uh, somebody from junior high school or something. Oh you wow! Know? And you consider all the times I've moved, you know, somebody from junior high school or some, and uh, not really. I guess they, they well, I think they'd be gotcha questions if the story took them there. Because they'll kind of ask wherever the story takes them, and um, they. Uh, uh, but no, I, it was enjoyable. And then actually, I kept in touch with uh, the the uh, producer of that for a while because he has interesting stories. Because he does these kind of investigative uh, journalism things, and and uh, I probably ought to call him. And then um, uh, no, it was it was it was pretty good. And then of course you don't know what they're going to say or how it's going to come out. And, and then it uh, comes out, and it was all very positive and good. I had a real positive experience for 60 minutes. Now, when you left Texas Tech, you spent some time away from coaching. You had a serious XM radio show, you and Jack Root. That's when you wrote your book, Swing Your Sword. You had a lot of things going on. Did it ever at any time enter your mind, you know what? I've got some other things that I can do. I'm going to hang this coaching thing up. I'm going to go ahead and, and ride off into the sunset. Was that ever a thought for you? Uh, uh, just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Now, and everybody thinks, you know, being out of coaching is like the worst experience in the world. And I think <laughs> it is for some people. For me, it really wasn't. Um, it was very busy. It was incredibly busy. Um, <clears throat> so we uh, bought this uh, little cottage in Key West, so went down there and stayed there with the kids, the whole thing. We just enrolled them in school there in Key West. And um, never had a car, just bikes, everywhere bikes. Um, and so got in great shape. And during uh, the radio show with Jack Roop, uh, the college football playbook, which we were the first to do that, uh, Jack and I. And um, you know, it was a pretty good contrast, pretty good radio. And then I'd do, uh, you know, kind of prison exercises during uh, the breaks <laughs> to get in shape, you know, <laughs> push ups and sit ups, and I'd kind of alternate, you know. And they'd get ticked off when she came back out of breath, you know, <laughs> uh, or, you know, something like that. And then, uh, but now nah, it didn't matter. I was going to try to stay in shape, or if it got too hot, because I'd do it out there on my deck. Mm-hmm. If it got too hot, I'd because uh, I had this little plunge pool. Basically, it's uh, I, well, it's it's bigger than a hot tub. I can say that. It, it's mainly to, designed to get you wet. It's about uh, I don't know. It's probably 25 feet by 10 feet or something like that. But um, anyway, so uh, once in a while, I'd jump in there and then. Uh, uh, wrote a book. Uh, Bruce Feldman and I uh, wrote uh, uh, "Swing Your Swords." <laughs> so yeah, that was that was a busy time. And then uh, and then I was on CBS uh, t- uh, TV broadcasting games, uh, CBS Sports. And then um, and then by the next year, uh, 
the book was written, and, and you know, and so I had to go on the book tour. Or uh, I guess I didn't have to, had, have to, but I wanted to, <laughs> you know. And then because um, uh, we self-published the book, and then um, and then uh, well, something I had to give because I couldn't do both the radio and the TV broadcasting and the book signing stuff. And I I enjoyed. Uh, to be honest, I enjoyed the radio the most, mm -hmm. and um, you know, because you could expand on stuff and uh, you know all that type of thing. And then, um, and so then, uh, so I was out two years, uh, and Dick Vermeil, who was out ten years, uh, Dick Vermeil comes down there to Key West sometimes, and I've gotten to know him, and he says. He says, you know, I had a great time being out, but I stayed out too long. He says, <laughs> he says I should have got back sooner, you know. And um, uh, and anyway, so so I knew I was in the uh, the prime of my career. I thought I was, and then um, and so I knew that I, you know. Uh, I had to get back in pretty quick, you know. Don't go anywhere. Audible returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. Our favorite venues, watching our favorite teams while tailgating with the best fans in the South. We're all back to full capacity this fall. That's why now is the time to book your stay for your favorite college football weekend at Mississippi's premier full-service bed and breakfast. Kay Tyler and the staff at Cart Barn Inn will meet every expectation of you, your family, and your friends. Call and book your reservation today at 662-983-7829 or log on to CartBarnInn.com. Cart Barn Inn, cozy luxury in a brown paper bag. We hope you're enjoying Audibles with Jason Scarborough. Watch every full, unedited episode via our digital platforms. Download our free Roku TV channel simply by searching for Audibles on your Roku device. Look us up on our YouTube channel, too, under Spirit Media Network and hit subscribe. And enjoy episodes of Audibles along with our other original content. Bookmark our website at spiritmedianet.com and stay up to date on what's happening on the Spirit Media Network, where we're changing the game. Family owned and operated since 1986, Lakeside Molding has become the trusted source of architectural products throughout the South. They offer fine interior architectural moldings, custom millwork, and cabinet doors designed and handcrafted in Flowood. Their showroom on Lakeland Drive is stocked with today's most sought-after interior details, including corbels, post, fireplace mantles, bath vanities, mirrors, and much more. Tim Shoemaker and his staff work closely to meet client needs for new construction, restoration, and remodeling projects. Lakeside Molding, where details make the difference. When it comes to cooking meals, drying clothes, heating water, and my home, nothing beats natural gas from Centerpoint Energy. It's my most affordable energy option. It costs less to use than electricity, propane, and heating oil. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. If you're replacing an appliance, choose it. Natural gas, your best choice. Safe and affordable, rest assured. For more on the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. During times of uncertainty, it's comforting to know we have a healthcare system in our community that's been committed to supporting us for well over a century. In this current time, we are standing together and our bond is stronger than ever. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. We ended up at Washington State in 2011, and there was a kid that you eventually recruited there to play quarterback for you, random Mississippi kid, Gardner Minshew. So what was it about Gardner that you knew that you guys were going to be a, a good fit and could really, I mean, you told him, hey, do you want to sit the bench? Do you want to lead the nation in passing? Well, eventually, you know how the story goes, but what was it about Gardner that was so attractive to you to bring him to Washington State? We really liked him on film, mm -hmm. you know, and in East Carolina he was playing part-time. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a transfer, I believe he was from Duke, a uh, big, tall, rangy kid, and I can't remember his name. Um, as a matter of fact, I think he got drafted too, but um, <coughs> the... Uh, 
uh, kind of a, a rangy kid anyway. So there was him and Gardner. I liked Gardner the best. But, uh, you know, the offense moved the best when Gardner was mm -hmm. in there. And Gardner's shorter than uh, some you know, some guys would like. And, and uh, but, you know, that's the, old, that's the ultimate uh, uh, measure of a quarterback's job. How well do, do, do you elevate the offense? How well do they move? Uh, when you're in there, and then you can see on film, he is a really tough kid. He is an accurate kid, and the offense moved behind him, and you can see his energy and stuff like that on film. And so then they came to Pullman, and uh, and well, and uh, you know we wanted, and we needed a, uh, a transfer, um, you know, just for depth, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. And then it was quite a battle, um, you know. He, fought it out with Anthony Gordon, who's with the Chiefs now, actually. <laughs> um, so it was him, Anthony Gordon, and uh, Trey Tinsley. So, mm -hmm. so, so Gardner, of course, is with the Jaguars. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Anthony just got signed by the, um, the Chiefs. Trey's working with us, helping uh, teach quarterbacks. So it was quite a battle, but, you know, I, f I felt like Gardner's energy and the way he moved the team was really impressive. Um, uh, where Gordon's got a real quick release and could just whip the ball. As a matter of fact, uh, um, Gordon almost uh, broke the all-time passing record. Mm -hmm. And uh, but no, no, Gordon. We needed a, uh, energy. We needed a guy that could uh, st uh, step up and uh, provide some leadership. And, and Gardner did an outstanding job. Well, you guys shattered all these different passing records. He was co-Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. Yeah, uh, he, got, he should have been the only Pac-12 Offensive Player. Well, I know I know everybody here agrees with that for sure. But I mean, you guys are just setting records. I don't records know where right. uh, that year. I think it was co that year. Maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 maybe yeah, he won yeah. it outright. There yeah. was a number. Well, there's always a number of lists. Most yeah. of them, he was he he was the guy. And anybody that has any confusion on, uh, you know. The, the, any of those polls that made him co, they're just out of their mind. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't close, you know. And, uh, but, you know, they do funny things. I don't know if you find this interesting or not, but, you know, folks, of course, refer to you as, as the pirate because of your affinity for 18th century pirates. <coughs> Gardner Minshew played at Brandon. They were the Bulldogs. Their chief rivals in high school were the Pearl Pirates. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't, and I'm trying to think. Uh, does uh, Keith Braddock doesn't coach down there? Does he? Keith Braddock coaches in that, and Keith Braddock played for us at Valdosta State. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you're familiar with the rivalry, just just a well, little bit. We called him Crash, but anyway, <laughs> um, he played safety. Um, uh, just a little about the rivalry, but I, I you know, you know, it's intense. Mm -hmm. I mean, down there, I'm sure it's intense. So I'm trying to go back. I'm looking through all these videos of your press conferences, and when, do you plan some of these things out? Because it's become must-see TV. Like if Mike Leach is having a press conference, you've got to watch it, and it's must-see television. And you never know which way it's going to go. And you're just very honest and very forward, which I think is why people are drawn <coughs> to to watch these press conferences. Yeah, I try to be honest, so then there's less to keep track of. But. Uh, <laughs> You know, nowadays in this day and age, it's real fashionable to get upset with honest people. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, political correct and honesty uh, are not uh, are not compatible. You know, so yeah, that's where it gets to be a bit of a problem. Uh, generally, no, I don't uh, think it up ahead of time. I kind of respond to the questions. Um, you know, once in a while, I'm you know prepared for some issue that might come up or mm. whatever. So Mississippi State reaches out about bringing you to Starville. I mean, you, you're having a lot of success at Washington State. What was it about Mississippi State? I mean, obviously being in the SEC, being here in the Magnolia State. But what was it that was the tipping point for you to to come to Starville? Uh, well, um, I'll tell you, and I loved, I loved Washington State. Mm -hmm. I loved Washington State. I knew we'd win there. I knew we could win more there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I really liked it, and I liked that part of the country. The people I worked with were great. You know, I had a president I got along with really well. The AD was outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, Pat Chun, the, the guy before that that hired me, Bill Moose. Uh, 
<clears throat> was really outstanding. He's almost like uh, John Wayne of ADs outstanding. <laughs> and then um, uh, I, uh, you know, but then the other thing is, is um, you know, I, at some point uh, I felt like. Uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of see another part of the country. I mean, I'd been down here before and always liked it. Like the hardest place for me to move from um, uh, up to that point was to leave uh, Valdosta. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to leave Val Valdosta because I loved Valdosta uh, in Georgia. And then, um, and then I would, uh, you know, say if uh, you know if. It, if there was a Division One uh, Valdosta, uh, if Valdosta was Division One, uh, I'd be the first to apply, you know. And then uh, uh, University of North Florida, I kind of have in that category as well. Uh, and the University of South Alabama, I can't, or no, not North Florida. It was West. Is, is it, it's West, the one in Pensacola? Mm -hmm. And so that, um, so. Um, well, and then uh, Mississippi State opened up, and so, you know, I was just really excited about uh, this part of the country, and believe it or not, it puts me closer to family because my uh, my oldest daughter, her and her husband are doctors there in Atlanta, and so they have a few grandchildren. Uh, my second daughter, her and her husband and daughter are in uh, Oklahoma City, so, you know, you know I, there's a portion of the family uh, that was closer to Washington State, but also there's a portion that's closer to Mississippi State. And then, uh, you know, and I was excited about the, the chance to, you know, recruit uh, players that were n more nearby. Mm -hmm. I was on a plane to Los Angeles all the time there at Washington State, um, you know, or, or uh, the Bay Area, you know, to get players. And then, uh, but the players right here close, I mean, that was exciting to me. And really to <clears throat> see a new place, a uh, new, a new challenge, you mm -hmm. know, type of thing. And uh, but uh, I really did like Washington State, and uh, um, <clears throat> I, I don't have any regrets about leaving Washington State. But there's an awful lot of things I miss about Washington State, and. Uh, uh, you know, but you have to give up something. Don't go anywhere. Audible returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. Before traveling to your game day destination this football season, be sure to download the MDOT Traffic app to help you reach the game safely by checking ahead for crashes, closures, and construction with MDOT Traffic app. Available free for both Apple and Android devices. At Forest General Hospital, we have the playbook for helping patients every day, every season. Our team is here to ensure patients receive safe and reliable medical care. Our mission and game plan is to do what is best for our patients. Our lineup of skilled healthcare professionals, together with advanced technology and treatment options, set Forest General apart. We are here to help you make winning decisions when it comes to your health. For more information about our services, visit ForestGeneral.com. Where is your nearest Bank Plus? We're here. Here. And here. We're with you wherever. Whenever you need us. Your Bank. Your Plus. Bank Plus. Serving clients in Mississippi and the Deep South, Warren Brothers Media provides endless solutions for you. From wedding videography, social media advertising and promotion, photography, video production, and much more, Zach and Zane Warren walk with you every step of the way to meet your individual need. Contact Warren Brothers Media to get started on your project today by logging on to warrenbrothersmedia.com. Warren Brothers Media, brothers serving others. Family owned and operated since 1986, Lakeside Molding has become the trusted source of architectural products throughout the South. They offer fine interior architectural moldings, custom millwork, and cabinet doors designed and handcrafted in Flowood. Their showroom on Lakeland Drive is stocked with today's most sought after interior details, including corbels, post, fireplace mantles, bath vanities, mirrors, and much more. Tim Shoemaker and his staff work closely to meet client needs for new construction, restoration, and remodeling projects. Lakeside Molding, where details make the difference. The COVID vaccines are here. Know the facts. Get the shot. End the pandemic. The vaccines are proven safe and effective. 
the vaccine does not contain COVID. Nor will it give you COVID. Side effects are relatively minor. Arm pain, fatigue, and low-grade fever. COVID-19 vaccine protects you and those you love. As healthcare workers, we're setting the example for our patients and our community. This is your shot. Schedule your COVID-19 vaccine today. I wonder if you think it's interesting that you were such a fan of the baseball playbook written by, of course, Coach Ron Polk, former Mississippi State baseball <coughs> coach. And Jackie Sherrill meant a lot to you early in your coaching career. It was almost like you were destined to be at Mississippi <coughs> State because of those ties to Ron Polk indirectly and then directly with Coach Sherrill. Have you ever thought about that, how interesting it is that now you're the head coach at Mississippi State? Well, yeah, it is kind of like uh, – because I hadn't – I hadn't actually met Coach Polk until I got here, mm -hmm. and then, uh, um, you know, Coach Cheryl, I, I met him when I was at the University of Kentucky, mm -hmm. and then, uh, so, yeah, it is kind of full circle, and then, you know, this is, uh, Mississippi State's about as close uh, close to a Division I uh, Valdosta State as there is, you know. So the question that everybody wants to know is, when will the class on insurgent warfare and football strategies be available at Mississippi State? And I have a follow-up to that. Can, can I come? I'll drive up once a week if you have it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, we are going to have it uh, this year. We just couldn't yeah. get it put together so fast. And so, um, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun to do. Actually, Gardner attended every class. Did he really? Yeah, he attended every class, and I thought, well, what the heck? We're going to go ahead and have him talk. Yeah. I mean, so we because we had some great quarterbacks uh, speak briefly in that class because you know, these classes would be uh, two hours, you know, sometimes over because we'd keep talking if they'd, somebody cared to hear. But um, you know, in the midst of that, we had Mark Rippon talked. Jack Thompson talked, you know, the throwing Samoan. And then, of course, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, Gardner Minshew talked. And so then, um, and so that was, uh, but uh, uh, the in insurgent warfare class, we were going to do it kind of right before the spring game. We were going to try to do it Friday before the spring game. Um, but uh, couldn't get everything sorted. Um, part of it, the COVID, uh, how big of an area are they allowed to come? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a, um, <clears throat> there's a certain amount of, uh, uh, you know, necessary or otherwise, everybody's got their opinion on this, but um, <clears throat> precaution as far as uh, uh, where we'd have it, how we'd do it. And, and we weren't exactly as into live streaming it, you know. <laughs> and then Mike, Mike Bumgartner, who was a state senator there in the state of Washington, um, he'd worked for the State Department and traveled all over the world. And, um, and it has actually taught, uh, uh, you know, the war end of insurgency classes. So uh, we joined forces to do that and did it once a week throughout spring ball uh so uh i don't we'd have to figure out exactly how to do it if mike uh, it'd be awesome if mike could come down here once a week for five weeks or six well, i don't know if he can or not i'm sure you could talk him into it right if you told him hey we're, we got a second chance to do this well he right? was all fired up to, to come up for uh one or two classes yeah. but we we're gonna have to kind of pack them together a little but we had some just fascinating guys we had a guy that uh, homeland security guy instrumental in busting the shoe bomber um, <coughs> we had uh, you know guys that had served in afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, air force for survival specialist uh, i mean some guys that had really done some uh, fascinating stuff and to be honest with you as good as those classes were I actually thought the best part of those classes, because see, we hosted these guys when they came and <coughs> talked to the class. So afterwards, as you go out after the class and and uh, you know entertain these guys and talk to them, I mean, you know, the stories you'd hear and some of the things they'd seen done, all that was, I mean, that was truly fascinating. So I'm curious what you do when you when you just want to wind down, just chill out when you're not 
I saw the weather report you did when you were in Lubbock, by the way. That was hilarious. When you did the weather for the oh, TV yeah, station in Lubbock. Oh, yeah, we had a 10-year later follow-up on that <laughs> sucker, too. So when you're not appearing on Friday Night Lights or 60 Minutes or doing something like that, so what do you do to just relax, just chill out when you're at home? <clears throat> no, I like to travel. Um, I need to get moved into my house. I'm not moved in yet. I'm just really? staying in a little guest house. but on a pond so I'll get the uh, I'll get the, the, the paddle board and I'll uh, paddle around that pond try to get a little exercise um, uh, I've always got an on deck circle of books to read which uh, <clears throat> it, it gets harder and harder to read them because you know nowadays um, there's uh, there's an awful lot of good stuff on TV mm -hmm. I mean you know I mean like crazy good stuff mm -hmm. like uh, well the Hemingway things on right now uh, the PBS has a three-part deal on Ernest Hemingway which uh, you know that's required viewing um, and then um, oh, even the, some of the Ken's burn uh, which is a Ken Burns documentary on mm -hmm. Hemingway. Uh, anything by him uh, is, is pretty interesting and I haven't made it through all of it uh, you know, and there's a lot of good ones. The Civil War is a real good one, and then, um, uh, then uh, the, um, you know, what else? There's, uh, well, I, the uh, the Kingdom of Pirates. That's another one that's outstanding. And there's uh, some updated stuff on there. You know, on Henry Avery and um, <coughs> this massive treasure, and that potentially. Um, that uh, you know captured some Arab ships, and because they found the money over there, they think he stashed it there. And then um, you know, but all over uh, uh, you know TV, there's some really good documentary stuff. And then the, the you know, I think the important thing, uh, you know, you got to be disciplined about not watching the news too much, mm. so you leave room for all the good stuff, you know. And then. Uh, uh, although uh, um, last night I started watching uh, the 1949 uh, version of All the King's Men, you know, which is a, uh, of course supposed to be about Huey Long, and it was Best Picture in 1949. The one interesting thing is, is uh, of course, it's shot in Hollywood in 1949, and. Uh, and there's these mysteriously high mountains in the state of Louisiana. <laughs> They're on film, you know. Don't go anywhere. Audible returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. We hope you're enjoying Audibles with Jason Scarborough. Watch every full, unedited episode via our digital platforms. Download our free Roku TV channel simply by searching for Audibles on your Roku device. Look us up on our YouTube channel, too, under Spirit Media Network and hit subscribe. And enjoy episodes of Audibles along with our other original content. Bookmark our website at spiritmedianet.com and stay up to date on what's happening on the Spirit Media Network, where we're changing the game. Our favorite venues, watching our favorite teams while tailgating with the best fans in the South. We're all back to full capacity this fall. That's why now is the time to book your stay for your favorite college football weekend at Mississippi's premier full-service bed and breakfast. Kay Tyler and the staff at Cart Barn Inn will meet every expectation of you, your family, and your friends. Call and book your reservation today at 662-983-7829 or log on to cartbarninn.com. Cart Barn Inn, cozy luxury in a brown paper. Paper bag. This piece of land allows us to grow row after row of corn, cotton, and soybeans. That's why as a farm family of Mississippi, we do our best to take care of this land. Water conservation, improvements in soil health, and reducing our carbon footprint all to grow the best products we can. It's just how we do things around here providing for our family and yours, the farm families of Mississippi. The COVID vaccines are here. Know the facts. Get the shot. End the pandemic. The vaccines are proven safe and effective. The vaccine does not contain COVID. Nor will it give you COVID. Side effects are relatively minor and include arm pain, fatigue, and low-grade fever. The COVID-19 vaccine protects you and the ones you love. As healthcare workers, we're setting the example for our patients and community. This is your shot. 
Schedule your COVID-19 vaccine today. Hello, I'm Gary Jolly from the Tractor Store in Richland. Now's the best time of the year to save more with Mahindra. And it all starts with zero. Pay zero down and 0% interest up to 60 months. That's more for less on many of Mahindra's best-selling models with tractors that deliver more lift, capacity, fuel efficiency, and built-in weight. So get zero down, 0% interest for up to 60 months on Mahindra, the world's number one selling tractor, Mahindra, available at the Tractor Store in Richland. So if we get in your car or truck right now, what, what are we listening to? Uh, are you a podcast guy? Or are you a you a playlist guy? I mean, what are we listening to if we get in your car right now? Uh, if it's a really long trip, um, it may be um, some kind of podcast or something. You know, maybe somebody sent me that's pretty good because people send me stuff, and some of those are pretty good. Um, uh, a lot of people are doing that. The 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 book on video or uh, on audio mm -hmm. audio books mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I probably ought to get into that if I was smart but the truth of the matter is is uh, uh, <clears throat> in the car I tend to be on the phone or answering texts or on the phone and uh, if my wife feels like driving then I sit there <laughs> and do a bunch of phone work you know yeah uh, I'm uh, music wise uh, it's either kind of uh, classic rock or um, or uh, you know, country type of stuff. Not too poppy country, but like uh, the old school stuff. Yeah, Robert Earl King, Willie Nelson type of country. Nice. Alan Jackson type of stuff. Nice. You talked about your wife Sharon and, and your kids. They, they've been so important to you. How important is family to you? I, I, it's really important. I think, in particular, like I say, I wouldn't be here without Sharon, and she's uh, mm -hmm. just amazingly supportive. And I mean, you know, because we were married ten years before uh, she made more money than I did for ten years, mm -hmm. and then, um, um, then, you know, the the the, the kids uh, it is always challenging with coaching. It's always challenging. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, they're thrilled by the adventure of the games and stuff like that, but. You don't uh, get to see them as much as you'd like to, you know, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you make it to all the games that you can, but a lot of times it's during spring football, so I could make it to two-thirds uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, my oldest daughter's games, and then my son, depending what he was up to, uh, try to make it to as much as I could, but you, you couldn't make it to all of them. Um, we used to do a deal that was pretty good, and uh, now there's a... Uh, too many kids and uh, you know they're married and whatnot so it's a little more challenging um, but when they were growing up um, we used to go uh, <clears throat> to Club Med which was outstanding which first of all I highly recommend and I've been to the others uh, too um, and Club Med's a little off uh, uh, you know, not a lot of uh, Americans uh, think about it as quickly as they might, uh, you know, beaches or something like that, which is, uh, that's, no, that's great. That's almost like uh, uh, a little more luxurious, mm. actually. But uh, what was awesome about Club Med, we'd get the, the whole crew and go there where it was something, everybody together type of deal. Uh, Club Med is uh, uh, if you, the right uh, the right one is predominantly foreigners, so I always found that interesting to you know to, to talk to the French or the English or you know because they come from all over the world mm -hmm. and um, and then uh, you know where you, you, and it's all inclusive as far as uh, food and alcohol that type of thing, um, <clears throat> but you stay in something that's basically a dorm. Uh, and you exchange that with, uh, you have your little apartment, but it's not fancy. Mm -hmm. This is not fancy. And, um, but they, there's a ton of activities. So they'll, they, you know, they'll keep you, you know, trapeze, uh, archery, uh, water polo, uh, sailing a boat around, uh, like where you're sailing at one of those little ones. Uh, oh, they have everything, skeet shooting, golf. Uh, 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 oh, this, the snorkeling trip. You show up at the dock either uh, in the morning or in the evening. Off you go. They, 
go to two or three different spots. It was just, it was very active. That's one thing I liked, it was very active. And so as a result of it being as active as it was, um, the kids were gonna be pretty well occupied and tired when they went to bed and ready to let it rip the next day, you know. The final question. How does Mike Leach want to be remembered years from now? How would you like to be remembered? Uh, that's hard to say. The biggest thing is I, I, I really have a lot of respect for um, uh, people that give great effort. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to be uh, remembered as uh, uh, somebody that was honest that gave great effort, you know. Hey, I can't tell you how thankful I am that you could have done a million things with your free time. Thanks for joining us for Audibles. I sure appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having me on. for watching. We'll see you next week for another episode of Audibles with Jason Scarborough.